Thanks everyone for showing up. Happy April. This is our April Legislative Action Committee meeting. I'm Lisa Chapman, Director of Public Policy for Michigan Coalition Against Homelessness. And I'm a little under the weather, so I apologize for my voice, but um, I have my colleagues who also will talk, so they will hopefully do the majority of the talking this month. And um, happy Fair Housing Month. So you can go to the next slide, Amy, please. So today we're going to give you just a few federal updates, a few state updates, a few updates from MICA, and also we really want to hear from you what's going on in your community. And then we're going to talk about what you can do um, in this next month to do some follow-up and do some advocacy on your own after this meeting. So we'll have some uh, good conversation together. And don't worry if you can't catch everything in chat, we will be emailing out the slides, a copy of the slides and the links after the meeting. So you will be able to grab them that way if you can't catch them in chat. So thank you, Amy, for doing that for us. I'll take this one and then I'm gonna turn it over to Eric. So just on the federal side, wanted to make you aware and you probably maybe have seen something in your inbox. But HUD has reissued the Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing Rule, which is a mouthful. Um, it had been initially um, issued and then walked back. So this is re a reissue, reissuance of the rule, which is um, geared to um, kind of um, address decades old um, segregation patterns in the country. Uh, address any, you know, racial disparities. And so there are some um, policies that are really um, geared toward PHAs and HUD program recipients. And so you'll want to take a look at that. The comment period is open now. It is only open for another week. It ends um, April 10th, which is next Monday. So the link is there. I also will pop in the chat a link. We, um, made some brief comments, which is on our blog, and I will put that in chat if you're interested in seeing what we had to say about the rule. I mean, it's basically a good rule. Um, we don't have a huge amount of comments, but we're glad to see that HUD is reissuing this. So with that, I will turn it over to Eric for the next slide. Well, thank you, Lisa. You caught me before I could get that final uh, piece of information in the chat box, which was, uh, basically a link to the blog, uh, which we can drop in later, but that will be in the materials that get sent out. Um, certainly the model of efficiency here with having the slides and the links sent out after the meeting. So thank you, Lisa, uh, for uh, rising above uh, feeling under the weather today. Wanted to just uh, point out one piece of uh, legislation that's been introduced. I wanted you to be aware of it, and that is legislation uh, focusing on the uh, future of the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness. So uh, on March 9th, Senator Jack Reed, along with several other senators, did introduce a bill to permanently authorize the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness. And I wanted to uh, just point that out, that what it would, in essence, do is codify that as a, a standing body, uh, as opposed to one that is renew, renewed on a regular basis. So it takes a little bit of the subjectivity and uh, politics out of it uh, to have them as a a perpetual body. So why don't you just point that out? We'll keep you posted on any action that might need to be done uh, on your part with respect to reaching out in support of that legislation. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and just to, as a reminder, uh, this is a slide that we had uh, in our slide deck at the last meeting, but I wanted you to just uh, have this on your radar. Again, these are priorities at the federal level through the National Low Income Housing Coalition that uh, we also are, are looking at. And I just wanted to bring them top of mind to you that when we think about the pillars of some of the activities being done at the federal level that also tie into the things that we're doing at the state level, bridging the gaps between incomes and housing costs, expanding and preserving the supply of affordable, accessible rental homes for people with the lowest incomes, providing emergency rental assistance to, those, to help those stabilize families in crisis, and then strengthening and enforcing robust renter protection. So again, just putting it top of mind for you. Next slide, please. 
And then again, this is something we shared before, but anybody who wants to gather some additional information to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, they do have an action center and we will be tossing a link in so that you can access that. It does include information about sign on letters, et cetera. So this is something you can explore on your own. Uh, we try to share information about sign on opportunities, but there may be others that we miss that you could actually capture by doing your own homework here. Next slide, please. And again, Housing First is something we want to keep top of mind. We've talked about it at several meetings in the past. Just wanted to remind you that the National Low Income Housing Coalition uh, continues to make resources available. Uh, we'll be dropping a link into the page that they have on their website about that that uh, has some background information and some tools uh, for you uh, to be able to talk about Housing First effectively in your community. And there is a webinar series, which we shared before, just so that you know, uh, the most recent um, topic was Housing First Services uh, for Veterans Promoting Re Recovery. Uh, and that is something that's available, um, uh, the recording and the slides, and we're going to drop that into the chat for you and make it available after this meeting as well. But if you want to sign up for this series um, uh, so that you can start participating in some of those, uh, we will also be dropping a link in the next uh, the next meeting will be April, or presentation will be April 17th from 2.30 until 4. So again, we'll pop that in for your edification. Next slide, please. And just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the fact that the National Low Income Housing Coalition recently released their GAP analysis, the publication, The Shortage of Affordable Homes, uh, which most of you should be familiar with. If you're not, uh, we will be putting a link in for everyone so that you can read the full report, which has some history on it. They've been doing this for a number of years, uh, but want to just point out that in this year's report, it is uh, affirming what most of us already know, and that is that the gap is getting bigger. When we think in terms of uh, you know lowest income renters in the U.S. facing a shortage of housing nationally, looking at 7.3 million units uh, as a shortage, uh, between uh, 2019 and 2021, the shortage increased by more than 500,000 rental units. Massive increase in that disparity that exists. And we're talking about the number of renters with extremely low incomes increasing while the supply of affordable housing to them declined at the same time. Uh, again, we're going to be dropping in information for you so you can take a look at that. Um, next slide, please. I'm going to show you what's on the website of NLIHC. There we go. Just so you can take a look at it, um, I did a screenshot so you could actually see what we're looking at in Michigan. Uh, the number of extremely low income renter households, 300,000. That's households, that's not individuals. And the number of affordable and available rental units per 100 people, ex extremely low income renter households. So we only have 36 units for every 100. Uh, people who are identified as extremely, or households uh, who are identified as extremely low uh, income renter households. Um, so you can see that there is uh, that 72 percent of extremely low income renters uh, in the state of Michigan have a severe cost burden. Those are pretty important numbers uh, for us to be thinking about, uh, even though they may not be exactly the same in each community um, uh, across the state. Uh, chances are they're in the ballpark wherever you live. Uh, so these are numbers that we should be bringing into conversations that we have with folks at the state level, elected officials, but also at that uh, local level as well. So again, just wanted you to see what we uh, can find in that report regarding Michigan. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Lisa, but what I will say is uh, just to save her a little bit of voice, if that's okay, Lisa, uh, is that we were invited once again to act as captains uh, for the National Low Income Housing Coalition Hill Day uh, that took place recently. We were happy to do that uh, because Lisa presents uh, herself so much better than I do uh, with uh, elected officials. She went and I stayed home this time around and she was able to uh, go on some visits with a number of uh, great individuals from the state of Michigan. So I will now turn it over to you, Lisa, and you can cover some of the deets. Great. Thanks, Eric. And I did want to just say about the GAP report, um, you can customize it for Michigan, and it's really helpful. We actually used it in our advocacy, so it's a really great um, source of, you know, statistics and data 
to be able to really paint a picture of how bleak the affordable housing situation is here in Michigan. Um, so we did uh, participate in Hill Day as well as the State Partner Forum and the P Policy Forum in DC a couple weeks ago. And I'm the short one on the left. Um, that's me standing next to Haley Stevens, who is my rep, and uh, Freya Harris from the Coalition for um, Home Repair, and Max Glick from Lighthouse. And then the uh, lower left photo is us in front of the Capitol, along with Melvin Henley from Sedum. You might know Melvin. Um, standing next to me is Cassie Fearfelder from uh, the uh, United Way of Southeast Michigan, and behind her is John Kirsner from UCHC. So we were a small but mighty delegation. Collectively, we did five visits. Um, Haley Stevens was the only member that we got to meet with. However, when we were leaving the, the Hart Building, after meeting with our senator's staffers, we saw Senator Peters on the street. And of course, I yelled out to him. And um, then he was on my plane on the way home. So it was fun to be able to talk Docker. to him. So. Docker. <laughs> Um, we also, uh, as part of the policy forum, got to, heal, got to hear from Secretary of HUD, Marsha Fudge, and um, she actually did um, a panel with tenants, so that was super, um, just really interesting and energizing and really uh, respect her and her background and, um, you know, what she's doing. We also heard from Rep. Maxine Waters in person and Jayapal. So it was great to hear from them and what they're fo focused on and what they're doing. So it was really uh, interesting. The other visits that we had were with um, Representative Dingle and she couldn't meet with us because she was at the TikTok hearing that week, if you remember that, and um, Representative Slotkin's staffer. And then we, of course, did follow up with folks. So it was really, it was a good uh, visit. Next slide, please. So I wanted to highlight a really exciting um, turn of events. As you know, we've been working on source of income protections for several years now. We now have bills both in the House and the Senate. Um, those are the bill numbers there. Uh, in the House, it is assigned to the Judiciary Committee. In the Senate, it is assigned to the new Housing Committee which um, Senator Irwin is the chair of, and he's also one of the sponsors of the bills. Um, it sounds like we're kind of on a, a fast track with these. The chairs of the committees want to bring the these bills to the committee for hearings in the next month or two. So we're really uh, kind of gearing up. What we need from you is we need tenants and landlords who will provide testimony about um, why they think source of income protection bills would be beneficial. Maybe a tenant who had a hard time getting a landlord to accept um, maybe a voucher or other source of income. Maybe a landlord that uh, does accept either VASH vouchers or other types of housing choice vouchers and other sources of income. So if you have anybody that you think would, uh, would be good, please email me. We have funding to pay for persons with lived experience in getting them to Lansing if they want to testify in person, paying for their time, their transportation. So um, we're excited to be able to offer that. We also have a sign-on letter here that we've been collecting signatures from organizations and individuals who support the source of income protections bills. And we just want to demonstrate how broad and how deep the support is. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, we'd really be appreciative. Okay, next slide, please. I did also want to say that we have other tenant protections that we're working on. You may remember that um, last session, Senator Winnie Brinks had introduced an eviction expungement bill. I understand that a new senator is taking up that charge, and um, it's Senator Sue Schink, and I believe she is going to be introducing that and working with advocates. We've heard from um, Senator Brinks's office, so we'll be um, circling back to Senator Schink and um, kind of working on maybe um, 
revising the language. As we are on the source of income protection spell, we have some a little bit of revisions that we want to make from the language from last year. So we are working with them on that as well. Okay, thanks. Next slide. So just a little follow-up on Advocacy Day, and then I'll hand it off to Amy to talk a little bit more. We really had great attendance, and I know many of you on the call were there. We really want to uh, thank you for your interest and your participation and your great advocacy. We met with 15 legislators. We had some challenges, being that the House had canceled their session that day, and so some legislators were not even in town. But... As one of our board members says, every day is advocacy day. So you don't have to wait for a specific day. You should take the opportunity to you know, reach out to them, whether it's over Zoom or email them or at one of their coffee hours, and really talk to them about what you think is important. Voice your support for the source of income protections bills and other bills that are going to be coming your way. And um, your feedback is really valuable to them. Amy, you want to take it from here? Sure. Uh, I just wanted to include a few pictures to thank our keynote speaker pictured here with Eric, Sam Singh. Um, he did a fabulous job kind of mobilizing our guests um, that every day is advocacy day, that your representatives, in fact, do want to hear from you, whether it's your first time at an advocacy event or your 10th. Um, and then over in the corner um, is Lisa with our intern, Erica, who was instrumental in uh, making the day a success. So we want to thank her as well. Um, and then we just had a lot of folks who were like these ladies here. It was their first time at Advocacy Day. They'd never been before. And then we had folks returning um, for the fifth or sixth or seventh year. So our wrap up to that is just to do a debrief because the response was overwhelming, as you can see from the very full uh, room there, which is great. Um, so we'll be meeting in a couple weeks to look through, actually this week, um, the evaluations, the feedback, scheduling, things like that. So uh, we just want to thank everybody who was able to attend. And I think this was the last picture, but yeah. no, there I, it is. I, yep, there's some of our, some of the McComb partners. I did want to also say that, you know, I really appreciate everybody's feedback. It really is helpful to us in hearing what you thought about the day, what we could do better. We did get some really great comments from folks. If you didn't do your form, please send it in now or email me. We're continuing to gather the information. And we also want to thank the Michigan Municipal League. Do I have that in the correct order, Lisa? Um, they had a beautiful space for us to use that day. We kind of spread out so folks could eat lunch, and they were also just very accommodating. So we also wanted to thank them. We could have done it without them because we had such a good turnout. Absolutely. The other thing that we heard from folks is people wanted to think about maybe another opportunity to do advocacy, maybe in the summer. So um, if you have thoughts and ideas for that, please let us know. Summer is kind of a, a different time. Um, there's not a lot of legislative sessions scheduled, so we'll have to look at the calendars, but um, we'd love to hear your thoughts. One other thing that I wanted to mention... Do you okay. want me to do this one, Lisa, sure. or how's your voice holding out? Okay. Okay. Um, Lisa was kind enough, and this slide may have been in the presentation last week or last month, excuse me, but this week in social media and in our newsletters, um, she and Eric both revised our um, What Does Advocacy Mean video um, and our homeless, and it's, it's called Homeless and Housing Advocacy. And we really wanted to encourage folks, the two goals of the content was to remind them that they're advocates on any level and also just to educate the general public on what Lisa and Eric and all of us do, but primarily Lisa and Eric, um, on behalf of advocacy, both at locally, the state and federal level. So we worked with Uno Deuce. We had other people with lived experience weigh in. We had board members weigh in. It's pretty brief as, as a lot of video content should be, but um, I will be rolling that out this week so that you can take a look at that. And we just want to thank Uno Deuce for all their coordination um, to get that done earlier in the year. So you'll see that on our advocacy page and in different newsletters and things. And I just want to thank Lisa and Eric, too, because it was done right at the beginning of the year at a very busy time um, that we were able to get that done in time for Advocacy Day. 
Yeah, I just put a link to our YouTube channel and um, you'll see it there. And also we filmed a Homelessness 101 with our partners at the state level, Eric and Jerry, um, kind of presented some programs and some statistics and information to folks just to kind of cover, you know, what does homelessness look like in Michigan in 2023? And that webinar is also on our YouTube channel. Okay, next slide. Just a refresher, here's our policy priority. Um, this lives on our website and it was sent out, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But I did want to say that, forgot to mention in terms of tenant protections, I was able to meet with my own state senator, Rosemary Bayer, um, on Advocacy Day um, in person with her um, in her beautiful corner office overlooking the Capitol, which was really a treat. Um, with Brian and Elizabeth Kelly from Hope. So thank you guys. But um, she is very focused on affordable housing and tenant protections. And we talked to her about um, junk fees in rental um, housing, application fees and convenience fees and wait list fees and all the other fees that um, are cropping up. And so she is considering um, putting together a bill to regulate or cap or somehow, um, you know, uh, control some of those fees. Next slide, please. All right, I'll turn it over to Amy. Um, on behalf of Kelly Beavers, our AmeriCorps uh, director, we just wanted to remind everyone that we do have an AmeriCorps program. Um, we are looking or she is looking for host sites. And she provides a webinar, it's here, and we'll include the link in your materials as well, um, to give you an overview of what it means to host a web, uh, excuse me, an AmeriCorps member. Um, this year, there happens to be some discounts for the host site end of the expenses that she'll go into more detail. Um, so it costs about a third less than it may have in past years to make it more accessible to the agencies. So that'll be on April 26th, and we'll be sure to send that out to you as well. And that's just a great webinar to attend if you're not sure it's something your agency could benefit from. Kelly can answer all your questions. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. So um, I've heard from a couple folks with the links. I'm glad you all made it here today. Um, we will be sending out the information so you can you can continue to join. Hi, Anna. Glad to see you're here. Yeah, I had another link too, so we'll get that figured out. But we'll be meeting um, the first Monday of every month, and in May, it's May 1st. We also want you to nominate an advocate for our Breakfast of Champions. We have an advocacy award, and I know you all can think of someone in your community or in your agency who's an, a wonderful advocate. And I just want to add, we've had a record number of responses already to these nominations, which is lovely, and especially on the advocacy side. We promoted it during um, Advocacy Day, um, but I will include that link. It's also on our website. But I just also want to stress, this can be someone who's doing advocacy at any level. Um, a lot of times people have the perception it's an executive director or somebody. Um, that's truly not the case. As Lisa's mentioned, advocacy takes place in all shapes and forms. So read the description um, when we send it out. And if there's anyone in your community that feels, um, whether it's advocacy or the other categories, we'd love to get um, more nominations. And just to let you know that the Breakfast of Champions is June 22nd. So I'm not sure what the deadline is for nominations, but it's at least still open. Plenty of time. For a couple of weeks now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just again, the sign-on uh, letter for in source of income protections. So this is the time where we open the floor to you and want to hear about anything that's going on in your community, your agency, your COC, if anybody has any timely updates or legislatively. Bobby, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Thanks for glad to hear it was a great advocacy day. Wish I could have been there. Um, just a quick update from some youth homelessness work. Uh, there are three bills, House Bill 40, 85, 86, and 87 that 
uh, create policy changes around serving homeless youth, like expanding the number of hours that a shelter has to uh, find a parent to consent before having to turn the child over to CPS or the police. Um, and then a couple other licensing and healthcare fixes. Um, we're hearing that those are going to receive a hearing uh, in the House Family Children Seniors Committee in April. Um, so I'll be in touch soon just to share information about that for the network. Um, I'm curious too, I'm sorry, I might've missed this part, how things are looking in the budget process right now for Micah's uh, budget priorities. One thing I can say is that I know that the um, Michigan Housing and Community Development Fund got a one-time infusion, but also there's some conversation about a permanent source of funding. Um, so we can follow up with more information on that. Um, I don't know that there's anything other updates that I'm aware of. Eric, are you aware of any other updates? No, I don't have anything to report out on that. Yeah. Any if, thanks, Bobby. And I know um, we've been following your bills. Let, let definitely let us know if you have um, updates on when the hearing will be, or if you want people to put cards of support in. We'll definitely do that and share it out with our networks. We really appreciate your support in the past, um, yeah. and it'll definitely make a difference this year too. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bobby, can you list the, the house bill numbers again you, that you had? Absolutely. And I'll put uh, the numbers in the chat too. Um, but 4085, 4086, so 408586, and 87. Thanks. There we go. Thank you. Other folks? We have two people raising their hand who, ah, uh, I can't see who they are. Let's see. Can you see who they are, Amy? Let's see, wait a minute. Oh, Dustin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to thank your team again for having us out for the advocacy day. It was a really great opportunity and um, share that our community and uh, continuum of care held uh, a spring retreat last Friday. We had around um, 90 people register and over 50 people show up um, to kind of go over some uh, HUD fair housing training, our strategic planning efforts with our uh, 10 local partners to address specifically racial disparities and help elevate those with lived experience. And then um, we also had a panel at the end uh, with persons with lived experience uh, with our engagement group um, and talked about like the need for non-congregate shelter, um, elevating those those voices to make sure that everyone's at the table and also the need for like affordable housing and youth services in our local area. But thank you. Thank you. I saw your um, announcement for your event and I couldn't go, but it looked really amazing. So I'm glad you had good attendance. I'm sure that panel was wonderful. Thanks for letting us know about that, keeping us updated on what you're doing in out Wayne. Who else had their hand up? Can you see? I can't see. Just unmute yourself if you have a comment. Hello. Hi, hey. Shannon. Hey. <laughs> um, I got that feedback from Senator Singh's office um, uh, regarding parking and how it's impacting uh, the those who are um, in the homeless system and that there, there's not coordination for appropriation to help alleviate that cost, uh, especially when we're being placed in the downtown areas. Um, and they said that it wasn't significant enough of a level to rise concern for. Um, even with my comp controller letter um, showing that the city had unlawfully took in $81,000. Um, so that was really disappointing. I still haven't gotten uh, any feedback about the unlawful foreclosure process that is happening. Um, so um, I'm still waiting for that. Um, I would have loved to be a part of the um, panel, Dustin, uh, with lived experience um, with 
the agencies and, and policymakers, um, because there is a lot of significant things that need to be addressed, especially with youth. Uh, they are not documenting properly and, and safeguarding youth within uh, those um, homeless shelter programs when there are inappropriate relations with the 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 clients themselves or other situations uh i've ran into where they're trying to hide it and they really don't know how to appropriately deal with it um and and it's kind of uh crazy because <laughs> these people are mandated reporters but when it comes to themselves you know their special interest conflicts with that standard that we already have in place um and so um so i i you know that's just one issue um yep. um the i would love to be a part of the income source aspect because that was one of the things that impacted me that they tried to use vouchers or that you know they weren't looking at them as source of income to uh, uh, help elevate you to be able to get into placement and i started right. how to educate our providers like no this is part of our income to help elevate that the people don't have a right to discriminate and act like that's not part of our income to elevate that for those requirements um especially using credit against us um, yeah. You know, in D.C., they have like 23 basic human rights, and one of them is not to be able to use credit against anyone that lives in D.C. Why is it only for D.C.? Why isn't it for the rest of us? <laughs> it's just a little, you know, um, I mean, I can sit here and go on and on, you guys. Uh, but <laughs> You're getting some love in the chat. Thank you, yeah. guys. Um, I'll add you to the source of income. Um, we have a work group that um, is over a hundred people um, that meets every other Thursday at 10 a.m. on Zoom. Um, I will add you to the list. I have a couple other folks to add to the list. If anyone else wants to be added, let me know. Um, we definitely need all hands on deck now that we're you know, gearing up for um, committee hearings and a, hopefully a vote. Um, Lots of good stuff going on though, but, and thank you for your advocacy and bringing our attention to the issue. I'm not sure about the parking issue. You and I are gonna chat, um, I think next week, but um, you know, we can talk about maybe some other avenues for advocacy there. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Anna. Um, thank you, Anna. Eric, I see the wave, I know. Um, Dustin, um, I have I have not been to the legislative meetings lately. Um, I have, yeah, I've been involved with Micah for quite a while now. Shannon, a lot of what you're going through, I have been through. Um, I would love to touch base, Dustin, and I am part of the Source of Income Protection uh, well, the coalition for I love how we go back to it. <laughs> the coalition for expanding housing access. But Dustin, I would love to connect as I am someone with lived experience. Um, and I just wanted to say to you, Shannon, that number one, thank you for speaking that because it's hard. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, I've been there. The parking, I didn't realize it was illegal <laughs> and they stole my car. The police did. That's the thing is, Washington, I believe it was a national call with the National Low Income Housing Commission in which there was a webinar in which they talked about the fight in, to ensure all of those uh, rights, uh, public rights that you were mentioning. And it takes people like us who've been through the fire, who've been um, hurt by the systems, hurt by, you know, regular people. I, I mean, our end, we had a pandemic that, I mean, let's be honest, no, it, that, who could ever have even imagined that in our lifetime? You know, got housing, about unemployment, all those things. So please keep, I hear the shake in your voice, but I just want to encourage you and maybe it encourages somebody else that, it's it, the really hard and I've been through way more since, but we have to keep talking and telling our story 
or things don't change. Things change when we speak up. Things change when we tell our story, um, when we don't stay quiet. And so every point you made is something so valid and so on everyone's radar. And I'll throw my information in the chat or in the chat for both Shannon, for both you and Dustin as well. Um, and Lisa, can you make sure my updated emails on the new uh, SOI you're going to throw out? Because yeah. I've got like 8 million links that are wrong. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. I'm going to send it out because we're meeting Thursday. Yes. Um, it's just, it, I'm still struggling. My health is no worse. Um, but it's really good to be back here on Monday's uh, monthly legislative meeting. And yeah, we got changed and we got a lot of change going on with time done and safe and just and all of that stuff as well. So yes. yeah, a lot of good things happening and, and you're right. It doesn't happen without people shining a light on their experience, talking about how they personally have been impacted and, you know, um, it's really important. So I'm glad we're able to have you with us and continue to have advocates like you. Anyone else? Any other thoughts or experiences? Anybody doing anything for Fair Housing Month? I know I've seen some different communities doing training. All right. Can go to the next slide. And just, um, you know, we have a blog, Amy sends it out. Sometimes um, we just updated our blog to include the affirmatively furthering fair housing comment that we just made um, to HUD's proposed rule. So you can check that out. We have some upcoming training. Our um, training this month is Little Things Shouldn't Matter, Fair Housing and Familial Status Discrimination. So this is um, perfect for Fair Housing Month and you'll hear about cases challenging fair housing violations um, for persons in families, qualified families with children. And so making sure that housing is open to everybody. So that is Monday, April 10th, sorry, April 17th at 10 a.m. Next month, we're having our LAC meeting, of course, and you'll get emails today with the follow-up action items. So look for that. It's scheduled for Monday, May 1st at noon, as always. And Lisa, this is Amy. I'll jump in. Um, I will, in this email I'm sending out today, put the updated um, Zoom link for those of you that are having issues. What we found is for some of you on your calendar, it repeated it from the old link where you put like a reoccurring appointment, maybe not for everyone, but that, and so you're still going to the old link. Um, so I'll make sure the corrected one is there, but you'll know it's correct because it'll have the month and the year for 2023. And you can literally sign up for all of them all at once or do one month at a time, whatever you prefer. But that's how you know you have the correct one. It'll say like May 2023, June 2023. That's the, the current one. So I apologize for any frustration there, um, but I'll make sure it's in the updated one so you can swap it out on your calendar. Great. I need to do the same. Thanks. Stray links floating around. Just a note about Micah being a membership organization. Um, you know, and it's great to, when we advocate, we say we're a membership organization. We have X number of, you know, partners and members. So it really helps, you know, inform us and you all letting us know what's going on in your communities and what's important to you. It's really helpful. And as always, you have member only benefits, including discounts and free training. You can follow us on our social media platforms. And I'll do a little plug here as well as the communications person. Um, I really appreciate trying to get your arms around all the links we're talking about, the bills, things like that. And so the two main places I'm trying to capture a lot of that is more in smaller digestible pieces is on our social media um, platforms. So I'll take a lot of the content that we covered today and just do different posts over the next couple of weeks. 
But then there's also a dedicated advocacy blog um, that after each LAC meeting, I'll go out and do individual blogs on different topics. So there's just two ways in which you can uh, follow a lot of this information, including um, our advocacy newsletter that goes out once a month. Thanks, Amy. We have a next slide or is that it? We're all, I think we are all set. So you have time back in your day to go and do some advocacy. Let me know if you wanna join us for our Coalition for Expanding Housing Access that meets to talk about the source of income protections or any other work that we're doing. We'd love to have you join us. And as always, thank you so much for your interest and participation. We value you greatly. Have a great month, everyone. Take care. See you soon.